Welcome back, friends. I'm Burke with Shared Science in Long Beach, California, where creative kids dive into STEM fun. This is Lesson 8 of Python Bytes, where you'll learn about classes and objects. You should have completed Lessons 0 through 7 before you continue. Are you still with me? Great. One answer to, le to Lesson 7's homework challenge is in the comments of this video. By the end of Lesson 7, you had imported your first library and used the function randint from random. Today, we're going to introduce classes and objects. This stuff can be kind of hard to get your head around at first, but don't worry, it gets easier. Feel free to pause if you need to let your brain cool down. Let's save the coding for later. For now, just listen. Let's start with a few definitions. In real life, a class is just a category and an object is just a thing. Fruit can be a class, and banana can be an object or a member of the class fruit. Objects in a class share some things in common, right? Apples and oranges come from trees, you can eat them, and they're relatively good for you. Much to my dismay, a meatball doesn't pass that test, so it probably shouldn't be a member of the class fruit. Now, here's where things get tricky. Every program you write builds its own world from scratch. So Python has no idea what a car is or a banana or a skateboard. Now, you're probably asking, why should I care? Remember functions? They're the blocks of code that you can run without having to retype them. They make your coding life so much easier because you can build your own tools and reuse them, right? Classes are like functions on steroids. In fact, Classes can contain functions that are only available to its member objects. Here's a very simple example. No typing for now, just watch. In line one, we create the class fruits. Note how simple this is. It'll get more complicated soon. In line two, we define the function tart. Don't worry about the self-reference for now. We'll come back to that later. Line three, is the body of the tart function. It prints, this fruit is tart. So we've created a class named fruits, which contains the function tart. Uh, line five defines the variable apples as a member of, or an object in, the class fruits. And line six runs the tart function. Let's give it a run. There you go. Are you impressed yet? Yeah, I, I didn't think so. Let's just look at one more thing here. I'll uncomment line 8, which adds grapes and gives them the value of uh, the variable grapes, gives it the value of seedless. So far, so good. You with me? And then we'll try to run the tart function within grapes. When we run it, aha, we get an error message. There is no object, there is no attribute tart that's associated with grapes. And that's because grapes is not a member of the class fruits. Apples is. Apples has access to tart. Okay, let's take this up a notch or two. Again, no typing. I'll give you a link to this code in a minute or two, and then you can play with it yourself. When you think of a thing, an object, you also think about its characteristics or its attributes, right? For instance, an apple is red and tart and crisp. Here we're defining the class place. This class is much more complicated than fruits. Let's look at line three. You've seen the def before. <clears throat> it's how you uh, make a function. There are two underlines before and after init. That signals Python that your objects will be initiated into the class with a series of attributes. Self refers to the object's name. We'll come back to that again in just a second. Name, address, excuse me, XY address, contains, and description are variables for values that you're going to specify when you create a new object in this class. Hang in there. Move down to line 14. We create a new object in the class place and we pass along four things about it. The name of the place, we've specified the barn, 
its location on an XY grid, and notice that's a list, and then a list of things that are in this place and the description. So another list, hay and pitchfork, and a description. So we've created a place Python knows as barn. Let's look back at lines three through seven. When Python creates a new member of a class, it substitutes the variable name for self. Get it? So barn.xy address is a thing now. See it in line 11? You can find a link to this code below, to the code below this video, and there's a tip for, uh, and here's a tip for using Replit. Notice that the name of my REPL is near the top left of the screen. To access my code, just add REPLIT to the beginning of the REPL name, including the at sign. Easy. That's it for Lesson 8. You have created your first class and perhaps sprained your brain. For homework, create a new class with at least four attributes. Use the place class as a model and make sure you have everything in both your class definition and in the line where you create a new member. Play around with the code, see what you can learn about it. Next time, we'll review your homework together and continue with classes and objects. Good work today. Thanks for hanging with Shared Science. Tune in again next time for more creative engineering fun. Not again. <laughs>